call is out. I'm happy to introduce the second speaker uh, of uh, this mini symposium, uh, a good friend of our lab, uh, Balash uh, Vasquez, and he's going to speak about generalized rural problems for complete bipartite by, by, by graphs and intersecting trees. Thank you, Isham, for agreeing to give the talk. Please. Oh, thank you, Sasha, and thank you, Andre, for organizing and having me here for this uh, mini symposium. Uh, so the topic I will speak about uh, must be familiar for at least those who, who were here for yesterday's mini symposium because uh, Andre Greshik uh, was talking about generalized to run problems as well. Uh, before I start, let me mention that uh, this talk is based on two manuscripts, both joined uh, with Dania Gerdner from Rainy Institute. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is where we start. Turan CRM from uh, 1941. Uh, it's about the maximum number of edges that a graph can have if it has n vertices but doesn't contain a click of size r plus one. And um, I didn't put there the, the expression, but rather I put there the, the extremal graph. So this is the so-called Turan graph, the n vertex balanced complete r pipetide graph. So we partition the vertices into r equal parts or as equal as they can be. If n is divisible by r, then they are equal. Otherwise, they can differ by at most one. And we join two vertices if they are in the different parts, or if and only if they are in different parts. And clearly, it doesn't contain uh, cliques of size uh, r plus one, because we cannot, in a clique, we cannot have uh, two vertices from the same part. OK, and uh, Turan theorem says that this is the most we can have. OK, oops. I pushed the wrong button, yeah. Um, so then this was generalized by a theorem of Erdős and Stone and completed with a, a nice uh, observation by Erdős and Miki Shimonovich that actually, if we are interested in other graphs, not only complete graphs, so we want to forbid some graph F and we are interested in the most number of edges that n vertex graph can, graphs can have without containing this uh, forbidden subgraph F, then the answer is asymptotically the same in the sense that we look at the chromatic number of F of the forbidden graph, and if it is R plus one, um, then, uh, then this is what we have. I mean, this, I mean so this is, uh, I mean, without the little o one, this is just the, or roughly the, the, the number of edges in the, in the two run graph, okay? And um, well, this gives us the asymptotics if uh, the chromatic number of F is at least three. If F is bipartite, then it only tells us that uh, the number of edges we can have is little o n, uh, n squared. Uh, there are lots of results, very nice results, uh, when F is bipartite about certain bipartite graphs, uh, but there are many open problems. These are the so-called degenerate cases. Uh, of the forbidden uh, or the two round problem. Okay, and the way how we denote it, the, I mean, the maximum number of edges is this EX for extremal number. So EX of N and F is just the most number of uh, edges that an N vertex graph can have without containing F as a subgraph. Okay, so this is the ordinary two round problem. So what is the generalized two round problem? So then we can count something else, not only edges. So uh, script N of H and G denotes just the number of copies of H in the graph G. And the generalized to run problem, now we have one more uh, parameter. So N and F are still there. And for the number of vertices, F for the forbidden graph. But H is now what we are about to count. So what we want is to maximize the number of copies of H in graphs and end vertices that do not contain F as a subgraph that are F-free. Okay, so uh, the ori original to run number is just XN of K2 and F. So K2 is just the, the, uh, the two vertices, so an edge. So then we get back the original notion. And um, well, in case we want to forbid 
multiple graphs, then we can write a script f for the family of graphs that we forbid. And if we want to, so what is uh, the script h? It means that we are looking for um, copies of different or multiple possible graphs. Then we just add up whatever we have here. So the number of copies of h when h is from the from the family of graphs of interest script h. Okay. Um, so the first such result is due to Zikov, as I learned from yesterday, or at least I remember, I knew it before, but uh, I just didn't remember the, the date. So it was in uh, from 1949 that Zikov, with uh, his symmetrization technique, he showed that um, uh, if we want to for if we forbid the click of size r plus one, it's not only the number of edges or click of size two that is maximized by the Turan graph, but any click of size smaller than, uh, than R plus one. Uh, okay. And uh, there were some other sporadic results. Uh, Anjay mentioned yesterday this um, uh, famous long, uh, famous problem of, of Erdős forbidding a triangle and maximizing the number of pentagons and the opposite version or so when forbidding uh, pentagon and counting triangles and so on. So those were studied. And then um, uh, Alan and Schickelman in 2016, they introduced this uh, whole concept, context in the, this generalized framework. And since then there are many papers about results of this sort. Okay, so as I said, I'm trying to um, uh, summarize results of, of, uh, of two manuscripts. One is about complete bipartite graphs. So in this part of the talk, whatever we forbid is going to be a complete bipartite graph and whatever we try to maximize the number of occurrences, the number of copies is again going to be a complete bipartite graph. Now, since an edge is also a complete bipartite graph. So let me start with just recalling what do we know about the edge for the original problem. So number of uh, edges in, in KST3 uh, KST graphs. So the um, classical result by Kivari, Shosha, and Turan, we know that, uh, well, we will always assume that S is at most T. So S is going to stand for the size of the smaller size of the, of the parts and uh, um, the size of the smaller part and t is going to be always at least s. So if you forbid kst, then the order of magnitude of the number of edges is at most n to the two, uh, two minus one over s. And uh, by the famous norm graphs, first introduced by Kola, Ronya, and Sabo, and then with the improved uh, version by Alon Ronya and Sabo, we know that this is sharp, this bound by the kovari shosh turan theorem is sharp if t is much, much larger uh, than s. Um, and also by Zoltan Fure, result of Zoltan Furedi, it is known what is the not only the order of magnitude, but the asymptotics of, uh, of uh, X and K2T, when we forbid uh, complete bipartite graph with one part, the smaller part of size two. And uh, there is one more result, the construction due to Brown and the upper bound due to Furedi for K33, the asymptotics is also known. Okay, so what about uh, what about um, uh, generalized to run results? So, as you see, or now because we forbid something, I mean a complete uh, bipartite graph, and we count complete bipartite graphs as well. We will have uh, four parameters. So, the important thing about uh, this slide, I guess, is that. It's all about the relationship of, of these four parameters. Um, 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 in, so about my results, I will fo focus only one part. But so so Alan and Chikoman, they they uh, they already had some uh, some results when these four numbers had these relations as uh, as put on the slide. Um, then there were some uh improvements by Ma, Yuan, and Zhang. And there were some specific 
uh, results by Boyer, Mesa, Oshronia, and Sabo, and uh, also some results by, by uh, Donny Gardner, uh, Avishak Metuku, and Mate Wieser. Um, okay, and so now let me state, so our paper concerning uh, generalized run numbers of uh, on complete bipartite graphs is somewhat a survey type paper. So if you are interested uh, in what kind of results are known, then you can just uh, look at the, uh, the manuscript itself. It's already uploaded to archive. Um, okay, so the new results from our paper, I will just go through them and actually not all of them. So in most cases, uh, we have some other uh, results as well. Those are more or less constructions or other versions. But so what I will consider is the case when uh, in most, or mostly when, when uh, what we count, so KAB, so the parts of, of the complete bipartite graph that we count, the smaller one, so A is strictly smaller uh, than S and T, and usually B is larger than, than both parts of the, of the forbidden uh, complete bipartite graph. But so these first two results are, are relatively easy, uh, kind of like exercises. So if A is strictly smaller than S and it is at most B, then we have the order of magnitude, M to, M to the B, and um, if we have strict link quality, uh, so that is B is strictly larger than S, or if not, if there are uh, if there is equality, then T should be uh, of the same size as well. Then uh, then we also have the asymptotics, and uh, probably it is better if you if I put here the the extremal or at least asymptotically extremal construction. So clearly, if I have a complete bipartite graph, one of size, a small size, I mean, one part has small size, only S minus one, and the other one is large one, then clearly it doesn't contain a copy of KST because there are only S minus one vertices that have degree at least T. So it doesn't contain, and the number of copies of KAB uh, for this, for this parameters is that you, you must pick uh, uh, the, the B part or the, the, the part of size B from the larger part here, um, because B is at least S. So you can do it n minus S plus one, choose beam anyways, and then just the constant number of A's, how you can pick the A part from the smaller side. And with, well, exactly S minus A one, choose A many point. Okay. And this is the theorem, or this is the part of the theorem that I will uh, sketch the proof of uh, in a couple of minutes. So it's a kind of a stability result. It's, kind of, it's a stability result. It says that if I have uh, the stronger assumption that indeed A is strictly smaller than S and T and B is strictly larger than S and T, then what we have, and so I mean, if we want to achieve this maximum number of copies of KAB, then uh, we, our graph need to contain this uh, graph from the previous slide. So the complete bipartite graph with one part S minus one and the other, the rest. And if not, then it's not just that it's not going to be extremal, but it's going to be, it's going to contain much less copies of KAB than extremal. So at least it's not just by one, but at least N to the B minus one. So remember the, the asymptote or the order of magnitude is n to the b, so it's a it's a lower order error term, uh, but still it's not just one. So it's kind of it's a it's a uh, a stability result that if you don't have if your graph doesn't contain this uh, k s minus one n minus s uh, plus one, then actually you cannot achieve not just the extremal number but much less. Okay, then this next result is a special case when S is exactly A plus one. So this is why it's uh, written with red. So it's a special case there. We exactly determine, so I mean, what should be the relationship of all the other three, so A, B, and T, so that it's going to be exactly, I mean, this, then if so, then, then, um, then, uh, then the previous uh, construction is extremal. If not, then we also know that we can have a little bit more, but just a linear number of extra occurrences of KAB 
So we have this characterization that one does when the previous construction is extremal and then can we have something extra and when we have those extra, then it's only linear. Um, okay. This next part of the CRM or another result of ours is that if now, so the previous case was when S equals A plus one. So now in the rest, S is strictly larger than A plus one. Then again, this is a similar statement to the one before the previous one. So now it's not, it's a, it's a, a super graph of that. So now we, I, I also added, or we already added here, the edges in the smaller part. So this is denoted by this K bar. So this is this graph and the result otherwise is, is analogous. So we came in here that if a graph, which is KST free, but doesn't contain this particular graph, then it's not extremal and not even close because there is the stability that at least some constant times n to the D minus one less many occurrences of the counted complete uh, bipartite graph will appear there. Okay, and again, for this uh, regime, again, we were able to determine that then is it exactly this K bar graph, which is extremal, and if not, then again, there is only a, a linear number of, of extra copies. And finally, well, this is uh, uh, a relatively simple result because here we are looking for K1B, meaning that just the, um, we take the degree sequence and we choose B and we add that up. So that's relatively simple. So again, then we know what exactly we need to add to this K bar graph, regular graph, if it is possible to add a regular graph, depending on parity and whatever, uh, and uh, the large girls, and then that is going to be extremal. Of course, we can have several types of graphs that are uh, T minus one regular and, and uh, graph at least five, but since we are talking about these stars, of course, they will contain the same number of stars. So that, that does, I mean, the, the, the extremal number doesn't, uh, uh, change just by changing the construction. Okay, so, sorry. So back to here. So this is what I want to show you, at least the sketch of a proof. Um, so yeah, so what I want to show that if, uh, if we have a KST free graph on N vertices and it doesn't contain uh, this graph, then actually it contains much many less copies than this one, um, or K, copies of KAB. So first, let's see that that uh, in this case the 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 asymptotics is very easy. Why? Because um, well, how many? So we can pick the B part of the of the copy of K A B and N choose B many ways. Well, we have N vertices and we can pick B of them. And because um, uh, B is strictly uh, larger than T, or actually it would be enough just to be have B at least T. Um, this B set cannot have S minus one, more than S minus one neighbors, because then, I mean, common neighbors, because then of course there would be the copy of KST and this is what's forbidden. So out of these S minus one common neighbors, we have to pick A of them and this is it. So we have a bound S minus one choose A times N choose B. And of course, as N is growing, this is the same asymptotics as this one, the red number, stands for the number of k number of copies of kab in this um, uh, in this uh, conjecture the extremal graph so this is why uh, <clears throat> the asymptotic formula is really easy and so what do we need to show now when we want to have this uh, uh, this the stability result well we can call a b subset good if it indeed has s minus one common neighbors because then we can really pick uh, the A part in S minus one choose uh, A many ways and bad otherwise. So what we want, we know that for most of the B sets, we should have these S minus one common neighbors and we, got, we just want to have, so if our, our graph G, which is KST free doesn't contain what we conjecture, then we need to show that there are lots of bad B subsets because then those won't contribute enough many copies of KAB, and then we will be done. Um, so what's that? So this, so this uh, just let me repeat, if uh, we, we want to show that if G doesn't contain this 
k sub s minus one and minus s plus one, then there should be at least this alpha times n to the b minus one bad b sets, where alpha is not just an arbitrary constant, but it's a function of s a and b, just whatever comes from calculation. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, <clears throat> first of all, we can uh, we can enumerate the s minus one subsets. Well, only that are of interest. Well, if they if a, if an s minus one subset doesn't contain uh, sorry doesn't have at least b many common neighbors, uh, then of course we won't get uh, uh, a good b set from there. Because uh, yeah, so we are only interested in those s minus one subsets that have at least b many common neighbors. Okay, so let's enumerate those, and then clearly any any good B set, remember a B set is good if they have at least S minus one common neighbors, then they are covered. So a, and a good B set is covered by at least one of these S1, S2, and so on and B sets, maybe more, but at least one. So clearly an upper bound on the number of good B sets is just this, if I introduce the, uh, so little, lowercase m sub i is just the uh, size of the of the neighborhood of the i s set here. Then if I add them up, then I get an upper bound on the number of good b sets. And if I want to have many bad b sets, then of course I just a lower bound is just if I uh, <clears throat> subtract this from n choose b. Okay, so this is an easy one, but and then we will need this claim that will, as you see, at the, so it has several statements. This claim. And the last one is, also, is again going to be an, a lower bound on the number of bad B subsets. So what does it say? It says that if we have a B set and we have one of those neighborhoods of those S minus one sets, such that their intersection is strictly, is, is at least T, but B is not contained completely in this, in this neighborhood, then B is bad. As a consequence, we will have that the neighborhood, so any two of those uh, S minus one subsets, uh, will have neighborhoods with, with, uh, with small intersection, and then we will have also this, this lower bound in the number of bad uh, subsets. So how does it go? So suppose first that, I mean, we are talking about the first statement that uh, a, a B subset satisfying this property must be bad. So suppose it's not. So the green one on the in the middle is, is our set B. And then we have an, uh, an N, a neighborhood that intersects it. So it, does, it is not completely contained and intersects it in at least T many vertices. Okay, so first observe that, well, if B is good, then by definition, it has an SJ, so I mean, it has S minus one many common neighbors in the vertices there. Um, say this is S sub J. And I claim that this N SI and SJ, so the neighborhoods mentioned by the uh, by the the, um, the condition of the CRM and the, the neighborhood that we are talking about now, they are they must be different. Why? Because this N sub S of J, it contains it, and N sub N of S sub I, it doesn't contain it because that's that's uh, part of the condition that it intersects it in strictly less than B many uh, elements. Okay, so they are different, but then observe that. So the the, the union, I don't know how they I mean how they intersect S sub I and S sub J, but they are both sets of size S minus one, so their union must have size at least S, maybe much more. And remember, the red one is the neighborhood of S sub i, and the blue one is the neighborhood of S sub j. So <clears throat> um, if we take the intersection of the red one and the blue one, which is, which, uh, which is of course, contains uh, the intersection of the red one and the green one, which is of size at least t, this is given by the, the condition, then this intersection um, is one part of a complete bipartite graph with the other part being the union. And so that is exactly a KST, which is forbidden. So that means we get the contradiction. So B cannot be good. Okay, so this is the first part of the claim. And then uh, it follows the second part that, uh, okay, uh, we claim that, remember, we enumerated all those subsets S1, S2, and so on that have uh, that contain S minus one vertices and have 
at least be many common neighbors. And we claim here that there cannot be um, uh, two that have intersection at least. So they, they, they intersect in, in this small number of elements, because if not, then we can, if the intersection is large, then we can pick uh, a B subset containing the intersection and not being contained in one of them, which would contradict the first part of the, I mean, uh, of the, of the claim. Okay. And finally, the, <clears throat> the last part, the lower bound that follows from what we have before um, uh, on the, on the number of bad sets. So we count um, pairs where M is one of the neighborhoods and B is a set such that their intersection is now exact, a, a B of size B, I mean, a, a B set, and the intersection is exactly of size T. Um, then, well, one way to take it, well, again, we fix first the, the, the neighborhood. So the, first the SI and then its neighborhood, you take, uh, you choose T of its elements, that is going to be the intersection. And from the complement, you pick B minus T and you add them up. So this is exactly uh, the number of pairs you can have in this way. But if you, <clears throat> um, if you do it in the other way around, so first you fix the B set B, then because of the claim, I mean, be, oh, sorry, because of the first part of the claim, it must be uh, a bad set because this is what's written here. If it's exactly, uh, uh, if the intersection is exactly of size t, then, then it's a bad set, okay? And, um, <clears throat> and um, because of the second part, so because of what I put here in red, uh, if I fix uh, the t subset t of b, so that this is going to be the intersection, then because two ni's, have an intersection of size strictly smaller than T, then there cannot be two of them that intersect being exactly this set. So at most one of them uh, is, is good there. So that what I obtained is that the number of such pairs is at most B choose, B choose T times the number of bad B sets. And if I just rearrange, so I divide by B choose T, then I get the, the lower bound that I have here. Okay, so having this, um, uh, this lower bound in hand, um, what we do, and I won't, I just mentioned, so I will just sketch it, uh, a case analysis according to the maximum size of these NI, of these NI, so the neighborhoods. So the first case is when this maximum is small, then here, what we need to observe, so the red one, so remember what we need is many bad sets. And we had two lower bounds on the bad set. The red one was given by the lemma and the blue one was given by that uh, very easy observation that uh, we subtract whatever the neighborhoods cover from all the B sets. But so if M is at most uh, and half, then whatever the sum ends here, they are of the same um, uh, order of magnitude. So that means that if I want, I mean, if, I mean, this is a lower bound on the bad, uh, bad set. So, I mean, I, I already get actually and choose B of them and not, not what I need where I needed only uh, uh, an order of magnitude one less. So I'm alpha times N to the B minus one. So this is really the easy case. Then a second one is when M, the maximum size is between N half and uh, well, almost everything. So we have a suitably chosen constant. So then again, we use the claim. Remember one part of the claim was that if I have a neighborhood, now I take the largest one, this is of size M, and I take every B set uh, that intersects it uh, in at least T points, it's going to be bad. This is what the claim said in first. So now I only consider those <clears throat> that um, those B sets that contain uh, that intersect N I in exactly B minus one of them. Here I use the fact that P is strictly, so I really need the assumptions on the parameters. Then what do I have? Then this is the number I can have. And remember, I want some specific alpha times N to the B minus one. So if M is at most n minus some big enough constant, then this is going to be at least that much. So this is how I, this is why I need this uh, C star so that at least a big enough constant many 
uh, vertices should be left out. But then I, I have the what I wanted. And finally, which I won't go into detail, so this is the, the, the longest case. Uh, but here, what we have, I mean, the starting point is, is promising because we already have that with the exception of a constant number of vertices, we already have what we want. Remember, what we want is that uh, a complete bifurcate graph with S minus one vertices in the smaller part and the rest in the other one. So all what we want is to put uh, vertices in the red part into the into the larger part, and this is where I won't go into detail now. So I, it is doable. It's not very uh, hard, but but there you need to think a little bit. And and um, the only remark here I would make is that it's not enough if that uh, what we consider is that how does the number of copies of KABs uh, change when we put a red vertex into the blue part. And it's not enough to show that, okay, we don't lose, or we also need to show that we gain a lot because we wanted the stability result, but this is also doable. Okay, so this is the first part. And now just a quick... Uh, uh, you have uh, 10 minutes more. Sorry? Uh, you have to 10 minutes more, uh, uh, Malash. Okay, uh, I think I will, yeah, so. So now about intersecting clicks. So let me denote by this B sub R S. So this is just the graph that consists of two clicks of size R that share exactly S vertices. And the reason for which is of interest is that the Ruja Samaradi theorem can be formulated in this way that, um, uh, that an, what's the maximum number of vertices uh, that, uh, oh, sorry, maximum number of edges that an end vertex graph can contain that contains uh, that where every edge is contained in exactly one triangle. And it is known that so the, the answer is little o n squared, but it's at least n to the two minus little o one. And I, I mean, this implies the same bounds on, on this uh, generalized to round number. So if, we forbid, so if we don't want an edge to appear in Two triangles, then exactly what we forbid is this B32 because the triangle is a click of size three and an edge is a click of size two or two vertices. So two triangles shouldn't um, um, shouldn't share an edge. And then you can have a disbound on the number of triangles. And they, uh, for some uh, rainbow variant of, of generalized problems, uh, Tim Gowers and Oliver Jans are very interested in this um generalization of of, of this uh, uh formulation of the rujo samaradi theorem so it says that if you are now considering r clicks and you count r clicks as well but you forbid two r clicks to intersect in so i mean they should share at most s minus one vertices then an analogous result holds a uh, little o n to the s but at least n to the s minus little o one so this is the general result. And then Liu and Wang, they started uh, studying when you forbid only one possible intersection of clicks and had some results when S equals zero. So that means when you forbid two disjoint copies and some others when, uh, when S equals one. Okay so, okay, so this is just notation. So the join and K vertex disjoint copies of, of some graph. So this is our first result. Uh, so this is when we, when we forbid to uh, disjoint copies of a clique of size R. Then depending on how large clicks do we want to count, some, I mean, in both cases, uh, the extremal constructions are very similar. So I mean, we could prove it if large, N is large enough. But so in the first case, when S is, so then, the size of the click that we are about to maximize is strictly smaller than R, then what we want is that we have a universal vertex that is uh, joined to every other one. And on the rest, we should have uh, a two-run graph. So, uh, okay. And uh, something similar for the case when S is between R and two R, it's just that we have, in that case, we can have more uh, universal vertices that are joined to, uh, to all other vertices and in the remaining one, uh, again, an appropriately chosen two-run graph will give the 
uh, the extremum. Okay, so here we know everything the, if n is large enough at least. And um, then we have another theorem. This is about, uh, well, this is when the, the two clicks of size are, they intersect in, non I mean, they do intersect. So that means they, they share S vertices and this is what is forbidden. And then we have this construction, which is again, very similar to the previous one, just a differently chosen parameters. Uh, for, so some universal vertices joined to a Turan graph. And if the parameters satisfy this red inequality, then we know that n, n is large enough, then this is going to be the, the extremal construction. And we also have, so this is one part, uh, particular result, and we, here we, we forbid uh, triangles sharing exactly one vertices. And again, we maximize uh, or the uh, complete graphs. Then the extremal graph is a complete bipartite graph with an extra edge. Clearly, if we have a complete bipartite graph, there are no triangles. So if we add an edge, then any triangle should contain that edge. So that means that two triangles would share two vertices. So it's okay. We don't have two triangles sharing one, uh, one exactly one vertex. So these are at least uh, B313 three, three, three graphs. And the theorem says that uh, one of them is maximal. Of course, we have to calculate that what is optimal for the for the part sizes. So I still have like five minutes. So let me just uh, say like a couple of words about the ideas and tools. So there are uh, the ones that you would clearly think of. So uh, because we are maximizing the number of clicks, so the Zico original results can come into picture and uh, of course it does, and, and the stability version of this that was obtained by Ma and Q a couple of years ago that is also used, and the removal lemma to treat the uh, almost extremal cases. And there is this observation. So what are we doing here? We, we are forbidden to have a, ba uh, a subgraph uh, BRS, so two clicks of size R that intersect in S vertices. And now we are looking for as many larger clicks, R plus T clicks, as possible. So do we have any kind of intersection pattern on that? And of course we do. So the observation is that either they, they intersect in a small number of vertices or in many vertices, no, not in between, because if they intersect in at least as many vertices, then of course I would be able to use the, the vertices of these two clicks of, or of the, uh, of of these two clicks of size R plus T to obtain this, this BRS, unless the two clicks, the two large clicks intersect so much that the union doesn't contain enough many vertices to have this BRS. And this is why this other part is good. And there are theorems about that. So, okay, so these are called L intersecting families. If we have families, of uh, sets of, R, of size R plus T and the pairwise intersections are all of size that come from a list L, then we say that they are L intersecting. And then we use two theorems. So one is due to Frankel, it is for the case when S is zero. So when we are talking about uh, uh, these joint clicks and here then of, if S is zero, then of course we don't have this small part. So we don't, that means that we, must have a large intersection. So this result of Ronkul is a, is a, um, a stability version of the erdős korado theorem. And for the, for the S larger than zero case, when we indeed have two parts of this list, so the small numbers and the large number, then for that, then Frankl and Furedi had the result. And um, whatever I had as a condition <clears throat> for the, uh, parameters R, T, S, and whatever letters I had, they are needed for our proof so that we could use the second part of this theorem because the theorem of Frankl and Thredi says that all what matter, so here we have, the, the condition is for the, for the family is that either 
every pair of sets should have a small intersection or they should have a large intersection. And of course, we know it separately. If we only allow to have large intersection, then that is about uh, the erdos korodo theorem. If we are only allowed to have small intersection, then this is a packing. And that was, well, that time, Frank Plantura, they had that paper in 85, and the radio nipple was relatively new there. And uh, so this is just that result that asymptotically, whatever is uh, the trivial bound gives an upper bound, and this is achievable uh, uh, asymptotically. And so this theorem of Frank Plantura, he says that it doesn't help if we put the two possibilities together. So whatever gives us the larger bound that gives us the, the truth. And uh, so in case that inequality about the parameters RTS satisfies whatever I put there on the, uh, in the CRM, then we get into the second case of the CRM and then we can transform this, this set system uh, theorem with uh, some extra work into this graph theorem. But uh, to finish with, whenever those, that inequality is not um, satisfied, then we would get into part three, or well, if, uh, the two parameters, I mean, the small and the large numbers are of, the same. so they are, we have the same number of of them, then of course we are in case one. But so what? So we, we, we couldn't turn the packing into a construction for our case. So we don't know. We don't even have a, a conjecture or a construction there. So that's that's uh, that's an open problem. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Balas. Let's thank Balas. <laughs> Okay. Um, do we have questions? Maybe people are eager to get a break after this really long call. Uh, um, maybe, but um, maybe there are questions. I'm still expecting. Um, Maybe I wasn't focused at the beginning. Uh, in the first sequence of results, is are there tight results or are there only upper bounds? Uh, or so, the, 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 the... so these are all tight exact results. So I mean, uh -huh. so let me just go back. Uh, oops. So apart from the very first one, after that. These are stability results. And then here we have that, we know mm -hmm. that for exactly what, what uh, values of the parameters do we have that exactly this trivial construction gives the extremal value. And whenever we don't have that, then it's clearly not. So it's like, um, so there is this, uh, it's an if and only if statement, so if the, uh, the uh, parameters satisfy all these properties or all these inequalities, then the trivial construction is optimal. Otherwise, it's not optimal, and there is exactly a linear uh, number of difference uh, between uh, the number of copies in the trivial construction and the extremal construction. And, and, it's, and it's the same for, uh, for this other one, then, then we have this altered one. This complete graph with the smaller part being a clique and not an independent set. Okay. Okay. Thank you for recalling. Okay. Maybe there are other questions. Maybe there is a question in the chat. Okay. Um, it seems that there are no questions. Uh, so let's thank uh, Balash again. Do you have a question or no? No, 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 no. Okay, okay let's thank Balas again. Thank you. Thank you.